guys buy injectors, they'll wind up coming in a Nissan box, and believe me, you'll be so proud of that box, you'll want to keep it, because well, i got news for you. Once you open it up, you're going to say, man, why did the box cost so much? Each new injector, this is a, an OE, comes in with tip protector seals. This is the flash guard on the end of the, the pentel assembly, and it has a seal. I can't tell you how important it is to not take these off until you're ready to install it and have your hands clean, have what your workspace clean, the lines, the loop rails, all ready to go to install this. This is a new clamp. It's not been clamped down. See how far open that is right now? There's a lot, almost out of threads on there. That, that uh, is what they'll, they'll move smoothly if they're open that far. This piece of line says Hyprex on it. That's the factory name for it. It's one of the fast ways to look and see if somebody's had a, problems in the past with the injector hoses leaking because all of the Nissan lines say Hyprex. The clamp itself has a little indication of its uh, size, 13.5, and I assume that means 13 and a half millimeter, but that's what I like to say, but something close to that. Where the connectors go together here, one of the, I think it's a design flaw because as the connector, as these sit in the chassis, this forms a little bathtub, and if water gets down in here, it wants to begin to corrode these contacts on the injector. Again, water either exteriorly or interiorly in this system is the biggest enemy that, that the system can see, short of uh, electronic meltdown. We'll talk about how to clean these here. Uh, it's not a, an easy way of doing it. I don't recommend trying to clean them with a, with a scraper or a scratcher because you will damage them and they'll just oxidize worse. Best thing to do is to take and clean these out, blow them out with air as best you can, and replace the connector that connects to them, and we'll show you what that looks like here in a second. Right. Okay, for those of you who don't want to take and buy new injectors, there may be life left in your old injectors. Various aftermarket companies have thankfully tooled up and filled the void in, in some of the parts that Nissan doesn't want to sell us. One of the most notable is the connector housings that go on to the injector itself. What do we do with that injector? The injector housings simply clip on and they've got a nasty little clip that likes to lock into place. Once it's snapped on, you can't get that off of there without virtually breaking it. And that's usually why so many of these have wind up broken right here where the connector goes. I like to take all of the, the connector wires especially on this side here. Now, here's one that hasn't been bent, and here's one that has. I don't know if I can get that good picture. Move it. Move it. Yeah. So the ends, the, the, the very ends of the ears are no longer bent over in the plastic. They're straight up and down. They're straight up and down. We've now taken them off and simply bent the ears, I'll take both these off and set them down. I think that's easier to see the whole wire. There's a wire after it's bent. Here's a wire before it's bent. This is the wire that, oops, okay. This wire here is as it comes equipped with these new ends. And it's impossible to reach over and touch, grab a hold of both of these and expand them to let these two clip wires release the injector. The ones I like to take, just take a very small needle nose pliers and bend the ends outward, one more bend to them. Then it's very easy to just walk your finger down the inside of it and release the injector and it can be done with one hand. And they're not going to slip off uh, when those ends are bent out of them? No, they will not. No, that's... In fact, the Nissan, to show you how little they are, here is a... This is a Nissan top stop. It doesn't even have anything bent over on it. This is what your car will come with originally. And they, I don't have any good answer for those. <laughs> you can bend that end out a little bit on either side and that will help right over out here the same way. This one is the same. This is the German version of the Japanese version. <laughs> this is my version of both. And this one here is what you're normally used to working with and they are a pain. If you can get a hold of some of these, all German fuel injection systems, multi-point fuel injection systems use these clips. Uh, they're available separately or go to a junkyard and just get them off of uh, dead wiring harnesses. 
Uh, the clips themselves are much easier to work with if you've got the wherewithal to, to get a few of those picked up. It, it, it looks like the Nissan ones would slide off a little bit easier than the German ones because you don't have that extra bend on the end. That's right, and they do. And what, what Nissan did was they took, the Germans took, and uh, let's see if we can get up to this. The Germans took and glued, put a little hot glue right here to keep that spring in place, which makes it even worse to try and get on and off. Whenever you go to hook these back up, make sure that the clips themselves aren't hung up inside the body because it will break the injector connector. Again, patience is a virtue. Take your time, double, double check that you've got everything the way you think it should be before you start jamming the wires back on. These are the injector flash protector tips. These are oftentimes missing or broken or cracked once you pull your injectors out to look at them. These are available. Uh, there are a variety of, uh, I believe NAPA may even stock these. NAPA seems to be all over the United States. These I buy in bulk, so I really can't tell you what retailer will be able to get them to you. Some of your injectors will have a slightly different shaped tip on them. They're a little bit more of a pointed end. Uh, either work well. You just replace them with ones that came in originally. Again, these band clamps, original band clamps, the 13.5 millimeter band clamps themselves, um, they're easily gotten. If, you, if your car, if somebody has put a worm drive style clamp on there and you have to replace them, these are made by a company called GEM. These are uh, a good quality German made clamp. One of the worst things that happens to these electronic fuel injection systems is that people get heavy handed trying to get the injector clips off. Okay. These are typical. Oops, these are typical injector clips. If these are broken, there is no physical way that I've ever found to be able to remove these ends and repair the electrical connectors that are inside of them. As you can see from here, the boot is missing completely. This one here, the boot is cracked and broken. In fact, pieces of it are falling off. 99 and 9 tenths of your cars that are out there right now, they haven't had the boots replaced. This is what they look like. Water gets down through those, collects on top of the injector itself, and then the corrosion begins, and your drivability problems really start to get noticeable. This company builds a new end, solder on connectors, and a new boot. And the boots themselves, once they snap onto the end, form a watertight seal. After you push your wires through here, pull them out a little further, solder them onto those ends, and push them into the connector, you'll have a brand new end, and it will just, you won't believe the difference that it will make on these injectors. One of the things you've got to remember is that these injectors are not a 12 volt injector. You never, never, never want to test one of these with a full 12 volts from the battery. These are functioning on 3 volts, approximately 3 volts. It's very low impedance. If you test these with 12 volts, you'll fry them instantly. And I mean, all you have to do is arc them, they will be dead. One note of caution, if you are going to go into doing this, there is a polarity in these two wires. There's one that the, is the lead-in wire, and the other one's your ground control wire. The, all of the grounds from these are controlled inside the, the electronic control unit of the brain of the fuel injection. So you have a wire. If you were to test these when you first open them up, they will test as though there's power to these at all time. And that is correct because the con only the ground is controlled, not the power to them. So if you're going to go put those on, that polarity is very important. I'm not going to uh, uh, suggest how you keep track of it, except I like to take and draw a picture of it, denoting the color code of the, color code of the wires is really nice. They're all white. You'll like that. But on them is a number, and that number is written down the wire. It'll say 1632. The numbers are nonsensical as far as I'm concerned. But the what, written down on the wire down is a number. Write that number down and replace them back into the ends in the same fashion that you pulled them out. Hopefully nobody's been there before you and reverse them. There will be really no way of telling which way, the, I've never seen it written, what's the correct direction of, of winding inside of these, 
or which is the power side and which is the negative side of them. Just suffice it to say, don't mix them up. You'll get a much better result. These injector connectors and clips run about ten dollars for the entire, for the, the two ends, these and the, and the other piece. So you, at the price of an injector harness, this is a very nice, easy way to repair your harness without having to disassemble the whole uh, wiring harness itself and replace it entirely, which is your only other uh, possibility of repairing it. As far as cleaning these injector connectors down in here, the best way to do it is with a dry method. I have a small sandblaster and it has extremely fine uh, glass beads in it that I have a special boot that could, protects it as I spray over top of it and it cleans the connector off and I can do it in chassis simply by hold, holding, taking the connector off and putting the blaster over top of it and evacuating it. We do it with a vacuum cleaner running constantly to keep all the dust and dirt down because it is quite abrasive, but it does do a nice job of cleaning them and saves us having to remove the injector to clean it from, to remove the injector from the intake manifold to clean it. The next thing we're going to look at here is the injector itself has two seals. And when people say they want their injector seals replaced, all they're talking about is this little seal right here. And all this does is, replace, is seal up air. It is an air seal, a vacuum seal. There's a small one and a large one, and they come in packages and full sets. This large one fits right alongside of the injector, slides down, and these, this one, the purpose of this big one, the first purpose of the large one is to allow the hold down bracket from the injector to compress this one. Remember, if you ever remove these these tip seals, and if they are have been in there for any length of time, replace these tip seals. If you get an air leak past the tip seals, you're going to wind up with very poor performance in an airflow controlled injection system. It's called airflow control because it controls the airflow. And if you have airflow coming through any other portion of the system except through the airflow meter, you're going to wind up with false air, and the injection system is going to be giving you erratic readings. And as the result will be that it will run lean. And when it runs lean, it will probably backfire and pop through your airflow meter. I think all of us have seen and heard that one more than once in our Datsuns. Again, these injector seals aren't a high dollar item. The thing is, wouldn't hurt to keep an extra pack of those around because you never know when you're going to pull that loop rail off to service one injector or another, especially if you're trying to service the ends. I've gone in and cut extra lines off, the high pressure lines. You want to cut these lines off. If you're going to go in and replace the ends of these injectors, these, this line likes to start leaking. Cut there two inches is all you need, really. Inch and three quarters. These are inch and three quarters long. The original, and I'm going to show you here, the original line, this is actually slightly longer. The original line is actually about an inch and a half. You don't want to short yourself here. You can always cut off a little more line. But this one here, this line here will fit right up to the T piece of the uh, fuel loop rail. You don't want it up there too far because when you do the loop rail doesn't want to fit properly and you can run into some, when you go to bolt it back together, you're just frustrated beyond your wildest dreams. Next thing to do is make sure that if you, when you're going to put in these hoses, identify the full length of these hoses by measuring the full length of the injector without the hose being removed and then after you put it in, shut the line, cut the line to exactly the length you had before and you'll have a much better result when replacing those hoses on the, when you're replacing any of the leaky hoses that you have. A word of caution, if you replace this hose and it still leaks and the leak appears to be coming somewhere around where the metal body meets the plastic, your injector is dead. Replace it. There is no cure for it except a new injector.